Hey guys, it's Trish back with another fun video. Today we're going to be using the Autumn Flight uh, Magical Mystery Bead Box and we're going to be making a fun necklace. We're going to design it together and it should be pretty fun. So first I'm going to use this uh, Monarch Butterfly as my pendant and then these are going to be for my earrings of course. I mean they just go perfectly. So I'll lay those over to the side. I'm going to use this beautiful bead mix. And I do have the name somewhere, but this is the Summer Migration Bead Strand. And I'm just going to look here quick and get that uh, bead mix name for you. It is, I believe it's Monarch Morning. Okay. So... First off, I'm going to use this strand, and this is going to be a big part of my design. I think what I'm going to do is use this in the front just, just exactly how it is, and I think that would look great. I'm going to um, use this bead right here and hook it to the top of this pendant so it gives it a little bit of a pop. And then I'm going to use these... Um, this be mixed here and just kind of fill in where I want and we'll go from there. How's that sound? So to get started I'm going to trim my strand here just like so and I'm going to pull that out. Again that's named Summer Migration <clears throat> in case you guys missed it, Autumn Flight. Okay. So all I'm going to do here is I'm going to use some soft flex. This is the champagne color in the extreme uh, medium uh, size, and the champagne color is beautiful. So I'm just going to pull and open this up and pull some of it. <laughs> Wee! Hi, Zach. How are you, sweetheart? Good to see you in here. I'm going to start, try to start doing these over here <laughs> on a regular basis. So, so I'm going to pull off some of that soft flex there. Usually I bead right on my, um, uh, yeah, on my, on my, uh, container here. I can't think of the word guys, excuse me. You know me and grasping for words sometimes. So I bead right from the strand here, we'll say. Okay. So first I'm going to start by putting on the beads from the uh, strand that I have here. Okay, and I can always cut it and add more to the other side. Let's see, I don't think that belongs there. Let's see, okay, so we're gonna work up here. Okay, good, all right. So with this bead, we would go right into this one. If we're working from the other side, this bead goes here. This is kind of backwards to what they had laying there. So we'll work it out. So, because I like it just in the order that it's in. <laughs> Thanks, Zach. You're always such a, uh, so supportive. I appreciate that so much. And these go on there. All right. So we have our first bead on. I'm sorry, I'm kind of out of camera there. This is a gorgeous crystal. Uh, with a B on it. Super, super pretty. And then we're just going to start adding our other beads just simply. Now you can choose when you have these um, strands like so, you can choose to keep them just how they are or of course put them in your own order. I like to do both really. I like to enjoy them both ways. Sometimes I'll move them around. Sometimes you know, I'm just wanting to make something quick and the strand's perfectly beautiful the way it is. And that's what I do. So just using some bead caps here and we're going to put these beautiful, I'm kind of in your way there, guys. Sorry about that. These beautiful, beautiful ceramic beads on and look at the pattern on them. They do some, so uh, look like the Monarch Butterfly pattern. So just beautiful. I love Monarchs. We actually have, um, <laughs> well, good, honey. Um, we actually have uh, milkweed planted at our home here because milkweed actually attracts uh, 
uh, monarch butterflies. You know me, I can't walk and talk at the same time. It actually attracts the monarch butterflies. So it makes for a very um, beautiful season to have those around and in their chrysalis. And I hope that's how you say it. <laughs> but okay, so I have this one side done, as you can see here. Get my camera up here. So this is one side. And again, I'm going to incorporate some of these, but we're going to do all this first. So I'm going to grab a little bit of gold wire, which I'm sure I have here somewhere. There we go. And I'm just going to use some uh, Beetalon German style wire in a size 20 gauge. And I'm just going to cut off a piece, maybe about eight or nine inches long. I always cut off more than I need. And I'm just going to warm it up with my fingers here. <coughs> Okay, and I'm just going to take my round nose pliers and just make a wrapped loop. Okay, just the regular old wrapped loop here like we always do. And I'm going to grab that loop after I make my circle and I'm going to wrap that wire around there. Okay. Zach, if you'd like, if you'd like to share it on Facebook and share with your friends, it would be much appreciated. And don't, we really appreciate that. Because this is just new, so we're slowly getting our audience over here on Pink Poodle Jewelry. Okay. So there's our loop that we made. And I'm just simply going to put this beautiful crystal on this loop here okay and i'm going to have the loop facing front to back because i wanted to be able to string onto um the uh soft flex okay and so what i'm going to do here at the end of this is i'm just going to make a simple loop and hook into my um Soft light, or into my butterfly, excuse me. Sorry, guys. In case you all don't know, I have um, cognitive issues with what I have going on health-wise, and sometimes it's worse than others. So that, if you hear me grasping, that's, or saying, um, or um, that's why. <laughs> but I try to, try not to, but some days are worse than others. Hey, we all have our cross to bear. So I just made that horizontal bend at the base of this, um, crystal, and I'm just going to take my uh, round nose pliers and hook them onto the end of this. Just press it between where there's no wire coming through on this side, okay? And then I'm just going to roll it <coughs> back just so I can get a loop there. And I want this to face the same way. So I'm going to have both of my loops facing front to back. I don't know if you can see what I mean there, but I'll try to put it back in my hand. Okay. So then we're just going to simply, actually, I'm going to twist that because now looking at this monarch pendant, there's a loop already there and we want it to hang right. So we're just going to open up this loop here. We're going to slide it on. Just simply making a very simple focal. Sometimes simple is better, right? So there is our focal, okay? Our little monarch. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to... I don't know. I'd like to make earrings, but I also want these on the necklace. I have some silver butterflies that I'm going to use, I think, in another project. If they were gold, I'd probably put them on here. But, okay, so we're going to slide on. I'm going to actually look for a little bead here because I want something a little bit smaller to kind of kind of um, work this down because I don't like a great big bead at the end of my pieces. Okay, so let's just find a pretty, oh, that's pretty. Let's do that on the end, just like that. And then... We will put 
Hmm. So I want to put those gold ones on the end. Yes. Okay. So I put these bead caps on the end and it just makes it look really nice when you put your uh, focal next to it. If I can get it to lay right there. There we go. Okay. That gives you a really nice finished look on that end of it. Okay. So I'm just going to slide on my butterfly focal that I made. <clears throat> and then we're going to start over on the other side. So I'm going to find the same end that I had, and I'm going to just slide it on the other direction. Okay. So it's sitting right in the middle of that loop. Can you see what I'm doing there, guys? It's just kind of going to hold that right in place and look beautiful. Okay. And then we're going to pick one of these beads up. Oh, hi, Melanie. Oh, thank you. Yes, they are. This is a beautiful box. I don't know if you, I think you get it. Yeah. Um, it's the autumn flight and I just am in love. So I put those bead caps on there. So we're going to hold that focal in place. Okay. And then I'm just going to start building up the other side, just like I did this side. Okay. So comes our crystal bead. This is like a milky crystal. It's really pretty. And then I'm going to add my spacer and my white bead. And let's see with that. And this gorgeous, look at this rondelle, guys. Thank you, Zach. You are the best, honey. Thanks for sharing. Let everybody know I'm over here. <laughs> Whoops. Yeah, this rondelle is just gorgeous. There it goes. It's starting to focus. Gorgeousness. That sings to my soul. So let's put that on. And let's see our bead caps for on our ceramic bead. Not yet. I get extra money in November that I hope to get. Awesome. Oh, thank you, Zach. This bracelet was made by my friend Gloria for me. I believe it's just like check glass. Not just, but it's check glass, which I love it for this time of year. It's so pretty. Okay, so we're going to go. The reason I like to put those bead caps on these ceramic beads is because you can see the size of the hole here. So if you're not careful, you can put a bead next to it that the end might pop inside of it or pop into it. You don't want the bead to pop inside of it. So we put these bead caps on kind of as a little barrier. Okay. All right, so we got that. And let's put on our white one. Isn't this a cool bead, guys? I can't help it. They're all pretty. But look at the variation in the color on that one. Really beautiful. Okay. And these rhinestone beads. Let's find the little area I want to go through here. I just turn them until I see a good spot. There we go. Okay. And this one. Now, this is the base of our necklace here, the beginning of our necklace, okay? So I'm going to add some more of these beads here from this bead mix and build it out a little bit more. Oh, they are. Well, geez, I wish they'd be nice to me with extra check. <laughs> I'm happy for you, honey. I'm happy for you. That's great. Uh, yeah, this month's box is stunning. That's for sure, Melanie. Okay. So we're looking good here. Let's see what we want to put next. Those are those beautiful butterfly wings. This is for my other project. Okay, let's put um, I think we're going to need like some metal in there. Let's see if I can get these in here. These bead frames are super cool. Let's find, let's put, see if these will fit in there. I doubt it, but no, <laughs> no such luck. Probably this one. We're going to just play the game here and see which ones fit inside our bead frame. So that one looks like it really fits in there well. So we're going to do this little cat's eye bead and this bit in this bead frame. So I came through the bottom of it and I went through the bead and then I'm going to 
once I get the bead inside, I'm just going to take my end back through and run it up through that hole in the top of the bead um, cage there. And it just looks perfect, doesn't it? Looks great. So let's do the same thing on this side. And I'm going to cut this off the, the um, roll right now because then that way I can do a little bit more on this side and not have to struggle with it. So I'm just going to cut that off. And you need to put your springs on. If you don't have springs, just be very careful. Of course, I, I mean on the ends of the cord here, you know. And of course, I don't. Mine are over at my on my jewelry bench, jewelry making bench. But that's okay. Go with the flow. Maybe I can entertain you by knocking it all off. <laughs> but anyway, let's put our cat's eye bead inside this frame. And again, I'm going to do the same thing. Put it through. Okay, pop that up in, beautiful. I mean, you can't go wrong when you <laughs> have this gorgeous of beads. I mean, it just kind of flows. And I wanna use these something terrible. So let's put these on. So pretty. <clears throat> And then this. These are like little disco balls. I love them. Okay. Looking good. See, do I want to put anything else on here? I just need to think for a moment. And I think I'm happy with this. I'm going to measure it down here on my mat. And it looks like we're at about nine inches. So I like my necklaces about. 20 to 22 inches so let's put let's make it to 10 inches because then that way the math's a lot easier so let's add one of these gold spacers actually let's put this bead cap on because i really like that okay just like so and then the same thing on this side and then we're going to put the these little beads on that we did at the beginning to end it. Okay. And I'm going to put the same bead cap on the end of that, like we did right here in the middle. Okay. So I'm going to put that on. And that's going to look really pretty. It's going to look really finished on that end. Okay. Look at that. It's so pretty. Okay. So let's put that other bead on. And then our other bead cap. So now all we have to do is crimp. And then decide what we're going to put on for the rest of the necklace. If we want to do a chain. Do we want to do a sari silk or fairy silk? We may, I'm going to put these back in the bowl. So they don't get pushed everywhere. Okay. All right, we'll move those over here because we're going to need those for our earrings. So I'm just going to sim simply crimp this. I just have some gold number two tubes, uh, crimp tubes from Beadalon. These are my favorite. The number twos seem to really work well. I like tubes. I'm not a crimp bead person. Let me know down in the comments or in the live chat here what you prefer. So I'm going to put, actually, I'm going to put another bead on the end of this because I'm afraid I'm going to put a smaller bead because by the size of the hole on the end of this, my crimp's going to slide inside of it. Okay. See? Let me move this light down. This will probably help some, maybe. Okay, so I'm going to put this little orange bead on the end just to keep my crimp from going through that end cap. All right. So I'm just going to take the end of my soft flex and put on my crimp tube. And this side is good because you can just kind of leave everything where it is and just crimp the end of it without wasting too much soft flex because lord knows we don't want to waste our soft flex
Oh, thank you, Zach. Oh, thanks, Melanie. Um, well, you know, I'm hoping to be doing some wire work here on my channel, so keep an eye out. And I have quite a few videos, too, that um, have wire working in. That's one of my passions, actually, is wire. So, so I just put the end back through, and I made myself a little loop. Okay. And I'm just going to take my crimp pliers. These are the Omterra crimp pliers. These are my favorite. And I'm just going to push, put them in the back part here. And you can see there's like a little tooth that comes up on there. Okay. And that's the part I'm putting it in. And I'm just going to make the loop the size that I want. And I'm going to give it a squeeze. Okay. Just make sure I have it that way. So basically it gives you this flat crimp with an indent. Okay, so what I do then, they don't have a second a second section to fold over, but I just use the ends to do that, and I just turn it down this way. If you can see the way my pliers are sitting, and I put either side of the ends of the pliers on the crimp, and then I just give it a squeeze. You don't have to do this, but it just makes it smaller for you. Yeah, Jesse James Beads, they definitely have a lot of um, creators that like their wire, that's for sure. So I'm of the school. I know a lot of people that are old school, they think that they have to run this wire that's loose here back through beads. I am not of that school. I know by pulling on this that my crimp is secure and if it's not you should do it again if you're worried it's going to come out that thread the cord that you run back through here the beading cord if you run it back through it's not going to do anything if the crimp comes out it's just going to end up popping out and hurting somebody in the neck poking somebody in the neck so i just pull on that loop with my pliers i know that it's totally secure i did a good crimp so i'm just going to take my my cutters and push it against that crimp, just like so, and cut that wire. Because it's crimped. It's good to go. I don't have any wire that's going to be floating there sticking somebody in the neck. Okay? So we're going to work this, work these beads up here, because now is when we have to kind of get everything where we want it, because we're going to do our final crimp on this side. <clears throat> so I'm going to take my crimp and put it on this and see with all this wire that I have over here extra um, I can save that and use that on something else just by being smart oh we got to put our little orange bead on the end by being smart and crimping the way that I did because we don't want to waste our soft flex that's for sure so I'm just putting this little orange bead on like we did on the other side so my crimp doesn't go through Putting that wire up through there. And then back through the crimp. I know it's hard to see with my fingers there. Okay. And then I'm just going to give it a pull. And this is where we're going to adjust the necklace and the loop the way we want to. Okay. So. What I usually do is I just take my round nose pliers and put it in the loop, just like so, if you can see that, and just give it a pull, get it to about the place that I want it, and I hold it there, and I kind of pick my necklace up and make sure everything still has good movement. It's not really crammed together, but yet it's snug, okay? So I'm going to give it another adjustment because I want this loop to go down a little bit. And again, I'm going to check everything. We're good. Okay. So now I feel comfortable with the spacing. I feel comfortable with the movement. So hi, Maria. Hi, honey. Um, so I feel comfortable with the movement. So I can go ahead and crimp this side off too. All right. Let me know what kind of crimpers you guys prefer. I'm curious. Okay. So I just give it a crimp. Again, I'm going to use my pliers and go side to side here and just give it a squeeze and fold it, 
fold it over, okay? If that's the look you like, you can certainly do that. And then I'm going to do the same thing. I'm just going to push. What I'm doing here is I'm pulling my cord and supporting my necklace. So as I'm pulling this, it's going to cut it as close to that crimp as it can be. So I don't have any of those miserable wires sticking out. You can put um, bead covers or uh, crimp covers over these. I'm not going to do that right now, but you can certainly do that. So I'm going to look here and see. I have some beautiful chains here, some chain reaction. So I'm going to pull my gold ones up here and look at them and see. which one looks best with it. Okay, so we have all different colors here. I just wanna kinda of pick one that's gonna coordinate. I know my blues aren't. We'll just work through them here. The white one would work, that's for sure. That would look pretty with it. This is my favorite one that they make, I think, this color. That's the nice thing about the chain reaction, the way it's made beautifully. So you don't even have to do anything to it if you want to add it to a piece, you know. And there's another white, and that has the same chain pattern. Okay, I think we're going to go with the white on this one. I think that'll work well. I'll put those back a little later and take a drink of my coffee here. Okay, so how I do this, so crimped and everything, we got about 11 inches for a necklace here. So I want to put my chain reaction on, so I'm just going to open this up. Thanks, Maria. I think the white looks good, too. Yeah, and it's just, I think it'll be perfect here. So we want to decide how we want to utilize it. Because if you see on the chain reaction here, this is the loop. And the loop, this is not even on the back where it hooks in, basically. So say, <clears throat> if this was linked together, it would be perfect. But since this is looped this way, we have an open end here, we have an open end here. So I don't know if you're like me, but I like to hook, I want my, my chain to look even. And if we take these ends here and we just cut this little piece off, it would be down at the base. But then we're going to have to cut this bead out of the back, which is pretty much what I end up doing. And then using my extra ones that I have to cut out for other projects. Okay. So I'm just going to take this little loop off here. And we'll have a little bit of chain left as well from this because we're going to take this little piece of chain off that's here. All right. And then I'm going to cut it, but I'm, I'm going to be careful not to cut the loop that's right hooked into the bead. I'm just going to cut that little jump ring in between. You probably could take your time and open up the jump ring, but I'm not going to do that today. So, and then I'm looking at it and I think, okay, well, I want to take this bead out of the middle. I'm going to go back here and do the exact same thing. Okay. And I'm just trimming that bead out. So now we have that to use on something else. So then all I do is just hook these beads, the end that has the beads open, like so, um, into my necklace. This is like the simplest, easiest way to make a gorgeous necklace quickly. And I'm just going to take a couple oval jump rings, tiny ones. You can use whatever you like. If you like textured, go for it. You could certainly use bigger ones, but I like the little ones because then I'm sure it's going to go into my ends up here as well. Okay, because those are little holes. All right, so I'm just going to get my chinos pliers and my tweezer pliers here. Scooch this off. And I'm going to open up these jump rings. And put it through my soft flex 
and then through the end of my chain reaction and just close that up front to back as always guys make sure you're getting your your jump rings to line up because you don't want any gaps in there okay so there's one side hooked my necklace is getting all discombobulated here <laughs> so let's open this one up and put this side of the chain reaction on okay and then at this point all we need to do is add a clasp this is just a simple single strand necklace but I think it has a really gorgeous look to it so we're gonna get a couple more of the oval jump rings in gold Let's see if I have any here okay. and we're gonna put our clasp on then okay I'll grab my bottle and let's see we'll pick out a beautiful clasp And this is very flowery. I don't know if I have like monarch flower, that all stuff. That that sticks in my mind. Or maybe this little sunshine. Let's look here. I got some beautiful class. You can get these on jessejamesbeads.com. Don't forget, guys, I am an affiliate. And my link is always in the description if you are going to purchase. Much appreciated if you use my affiliate. It doesn't cost you a penny. It just helps me out. Okay, so we have this little gold floral one, which I really like. And then it has the leaf uh, bar in it. I think we're going to go for that one. Yeah, I think that's the one I want. So we'll stick these back here. And grab a couple more jump rings. Open these up. And I always like to put the loop on the right side. It's just me. It's just how I like to do it. I always put my lobster clasp when I use those on the right side. Um, it's just, to me, I think that's the working side. So that's what I put. And a lot of people like it on the right, like the clasps and uh, the lobster clasps on there too, on the right side. It's just been my experience. And we're just going to open our jump ring up and put our bar clasp on the end here. And you can see how nice these small oval jump rings lets that chain slide right onto it. Really nice. So that is our necklace completed. Easy peasy. And that was pretty easy and pretty fun. Do you guys want to do a pair of earrings to go with, or are you ready to sign off? There we go. Beautiful piece. I'll show you that better. These are the Monarchs that I want to use for the earrings. And this set's going to be absolutely gorgeous, I think. And not that much work to do. Pretty easy. You have all the parts and pieces here with that magical mystery box makes it earrings please okay we get a vote for earrings okay so we'll do some wire work here on our earrings um i just can't stop looking at this it's so pretty how am i gonna part with this i don't know if i will so let's put that here on the side okay and then we'll get our earrings stuff around so i'm just gonna pull this bead mix back out and I can't, I don't know, I want to incorporate these, but I don't know if this is going to be, if I should combine these together. No, I think I'm going to do beads. So let's just pour this out again. I like getting my beads off the mat. I always have. 
And what I'm going to do here is I'm just going to start looking at the beads and I'm auditioning different beads for the piece. Okay. So I'm figuring out what do I want to be hooked down here to my, because I usually make my, to my uh, butterfly, I usually make my earrings in two to three pieces. Oh, thank you, Melanie. Yes, I do like the chain reaction as well. It's very versatile. And you can actually cut it apart and make your own links and add even in between it. Uh, and I've done that, and it's really pretty that way too. So I want probably some smaller beads down here on this portion because, like I said, I like to do my earrings in two to three parts because that way they have the most movement, okay? So I think I'm going to go with one of these down here. And I know I didn't put any pops of black in our necklace. Um, that was just my preference. You could certainly do that because it would pull in the um, black in the monarchs. Um, I don't know for sure if I'm going to do that with this because I think it might, um, since it's a set, it won't look right. So we're just playing here. We're looking what beads are going to coordinate right, are going to be the right size. I'm going to put these white ones in maybe. Just keep them simple. See, keep them fun. All right. So I'm thinking I like those cat's eye beads better because I also have those in there. And of course, we're going to need some spacers and some bead caps to add some metal in because the metal really makes all the beads pop. We have these beautiful spacers. I don't know. I think those might be a little big, but we'll see. So first, we're going to start out here with our little bead at the bottom, okay? And I also have some little gold seed beads here. Um, Jesse James Beads does sell a few Toho's, so it is there if you wanna grab a few. I find that the um, metal color seed beads work very well for um, spacer beads because they look like they're real metal, so. They work well for that. Okay, so I'm just going to take a piece of wire off here. I'm probably going to cut about 12 inches. Okay. And this is going to be more than I need, I'm sure. You don't have any chain reaction. You've got to get you some, Melanie. I have quite the stock, but I use it a lot. So I'm just warming this up with my fingers, just running my hands. You can use your nylon jaw and pliers. You don't want to go too heavy on the nylon jaw pliers because the more you use them, the harder your wire is going to get. And you don't want to work hard on your wire before you even start. Okay. So all I'm going to do on this end here, I'm going to make sure I have a nice flush cut. And I'm going to take my round nose pliers and I'm going to roll that back, grab that end and just roll it back to make a loop. And then I'm just gonna pop my pliers back in there and bring this long piece back like so. So then it sits more like a lollipop up on top of that. It's centered, okay? <clears throat> so, to do with my tweezer pliers, my favorite. I'm just gonna open this loop up. I'm gonna put our gorgeous little charm on here and close it. Close our loop. Okay, and I'm hitting the, the camera with the wire. <laughs> Sorry about that. And I'm just gonna put one of my gold seed beads on. And then my little orange bead. I have a lot of wire here, so I'm way up here putting these beads on. Okay, and then another gold seed bead. So that is what we have so far. And I'm just going to do a simple loop. The reason I like to do simple loops when I make earrings is because the wrap, you can do wrap loops, but I like to conserve the length of my pieces because I like to add lots of levels to it, lots of pieces and parts. So if I conserve the space because a wrap loop's going to take more space up than a simple loop. Okay, that's why I do that. 
I don't do that with all of my earrings, but like when we get to the finish, I'll probably put a wrap loop on top and that way then I can use the, the utilize the wire to add interest to my piece. So I just bent that horizontally for a simple loop. Get those out of the way because my camera's trying to focus on everything but what I needed to. And I'm just going to grab that end with my round nose pliers and I'm just going to roll it back simply. That's all there is to it. This is actually 20 gauge German wire right there. Okay. I like German wire um, for mo a lot of projects. Copper is nice too for certain things, but uh, the German wire is stiffer and it holds its shape much nicer. I really don't use aluminum wire for anything because I don't like the softness of it. It'll, it just to me feels like it's just going to bend, you know, when using it on a piece. So I adjusted my loops so they're both facing the same direction. Okay. Back to front, just like that. So now we're going to make our next piece for our earrings. Flush cut the end and roll it back. And then make our little lollipop again. Okay. Open that up. And we're going to hook it into this piece as we go because I like to do that because then you can just kind of see what, what am I working with here. And it all then can be built together and you can really see how it looks with the bottom piece if I can get it to stay still here. Okay. So that loop is in. I think we're going to add another gold seed bead. It's fun just to design without thinking ahead, just kind of going with what's in front of you. And I think I want to use these beautiful beads. This one right here. And put it on there another gold seed bead. All right, so there's our second section. Simple, simple, simple. But you can see by the way we have the movement there, it's going to be very interesting. All right, so we're going to do another simple loop. I'm just going to bring that in and grab it, bend it, give myself a little less than a quarter of an inch, and trim it. And we're actually going to, the once we get the um, up to the top, I am going to do a little wire wrapping up there. And I bent that seed bead part and I didn't want to. So we're going to go back in and make sure we're above that seed bead when we bend that. Okay. Because you don't want it going over on the wire for you. And then I'm just going to give this a wrap. I'm just going to make my simple loop here with my round nose and I'm just kind of adjusting it making sure it's the size I want it to be and then what I'll usually do is I'll just take my um, tweezer nose pliers back in and uh, adjust the loops the way I want them so they're both going to be facing side to side now and you can do your loops however you want I just like to go from you know, front to back to sideways or sideways to front to back to, you know, it just kind of, to me, it looks better when you have it that way. Cause they have to be staggered because you want everything to fit right on your piece, all your loops to fit together. Right. Okay. All right. So that's what we have so far. And I think I'm going to do, um, one more bead up here at the top. It's going to be a little bit of a shoulder duster, but we could always put looped posts on these to keep the length down too. Um, if you know what I mean, it's actually, and I do have some gold ones somewhere. Here we go. So I have some 
four millimeter ball post ear wires in um, with the clutch on it. They're 18 karat gold plated. So let's use those just for something different. Does anyone ever use the loop the uh, posts with the loops on their earrings? Something different. I always use um, usually use uh, French ear wires. Those are my favorite, but we're going to just go outside the box today. All right, so our last bead that we're going to pick here, I want something. It's not going to be too long. Do I want to put that? Is there more of these crystals? Oh, you just shut up. <laughs> I really want to make them big, don't I? <laughs> I just want to use that on my earring. Let's see. Yeah, that'd be too much. So I think we're going to go with our standby here that worked really well in the necklace. These really pretty um, AB rondelles. Okay. And I'm going to find my piece of wire here. And again, I'm going to make sure I have a flush end. Same process. Rolling it back. Okay. To get that loop. And then popping it back so it's centered on that wire. Okay, you have your little lollipop. And we're gonna hook those together. Whoops, that's not the piece I wanted, but this piece. All right, just like so, loop to loop. And we're gonna just do this simple bead on top. I think we're gonna do. Let's see, a gold seed bead on the bottom. Because I like the way that the small beads hold everything onto the piece of wire. You don't want any of the larger hole beads slipping down through. And I think we're going to use these pretty little gold spacer beads. And then add that beautiful AB bead. And then another one of those gold spacers. Okay. And those are going to be some shoulder dusters, guys, but they're going to be gorgeous. And then one more. Now, you could make these where you take the center bead out here and just hook these two parts together. If you like shorter earrings, instead of doing three links, you could do two. You know, that would work just fine. Or you could just take this very bottom and just hook it into your ear wire. It's all, you know, about what length you prefer and make it your own, you know. Okay, so how are we hanging here? How are we hanging? There we go. Okay, so I'm going to make this so this loop going side to sides so that I can hook it into my loop easily and it'll hang right. Okay, so let me just get my earring position the way I want it. Let's see. Okay. And then I'm just going to bend this sideways. And now we're going to do a wrap loop. I'm going to put my pliers in here. And I'm going to go up and over with my wire. Twist my pliers to be horizontal. And then cross over. Then I take the round nose pliers out. You can make that loop a little smaller. And then wrap your wire around the top just to make your wrap loop and then you can take this wire down and really put some beautiful accents and we're just bringing that across the front of the bead and I usually change to my fingers at this point and then crossing it the whole way across to the other side and then I'm giving it like two or three wraps at the base here okay and you could also just work your way down if you wanted to just take that wire, you'd have a little bit of stray wire on the back here, but I think it'd be okay. And work your way down the earring, just giving it a couple loops at the top of that, taking it across the bead, a couple loops there. Now you see why I took so much wire. <laughs> All right. And see, the only thing is with taking that wire down just like that instead of cutting it, which I could certainly cut it still, it's going to keep your earring still. So let's trim it because we want to see some movement. 
So I'm just going to trim this and just tuck this in the top. And so what you would do, say if you didn't want to just jump down like that because you wanted that flow, you would just start your wire here at the top of the second piece on the loop and just do the same thing you did on the first. Okay. Yes, I do. I like the look of the wrap beads too. I think they look really elegant. Okay, so we have that one. So we're down here on the bottom and you can go as crazy as you want with the wrapping guys. Um, you can really build it up. You can go back and forth and really make a um, wire covered bead. But even just that simple line across there, like really judges it up. So I'm going to trim that off. Just like that. And you could wrap the bottom one if you wanted to. I'm not going to do that, but we'll just go with this for now. If I can find my end to push it in. There it is. I swear my glasses are extra dirty today or something. All right. So now I'm laying this down and I'm looking at it and I'm thinking, okay, is every, all the loops the way I want them to be? Is everything laying the way I want them to be? And I can see up here. This is pretty good, but I just want to get it to be centered here with the other loop. So we have nice mechanics. All right. And then you can just put on your little uh, loop if you want, or if you want to do a French wire, you can certainly do that. <clears throat> and let's see, this. these usually open. So let's see if this one does. Maybe not. I never know, and I don't want to break them, because especially these are uh, 18 karat gold filled ones. Yeah, so we would just hook that in with a jump ring or just put it on the wrap loop before you um, wrap it up. Okay, so I'm just going to take one of our little tiny jump rings again, open that up, hook on to our ear wire. And hook onto our earring and close our jump ring. And that is it. There's one earring down. Does anyone have any questions about the wire wrapping, anything like that? For those watching the replay, you can always put them in the comments and I'm happy to answer. For those that are live here, I'm happy to help you on the spot for sure. So there we go. There's our pretty earring. So we'll just do this other one. Thank you. Thanks, guys. So I'm just going to whip the other one up quickly here because I already showed you the process. So if you want to watch that, you can. Again, I'm taking a nice size piece of wire. Push cut. Now, I don't know if you guys have a one-step looper, but you could use this in this process and it would be even faster, okay? It just will make your loops on the ends just look at each split, but this is pretty easy too. All right, so I just warmed my wire up, I made my loop, and I'm going to hook on my charm. Make sure where my closure is back. Okay, let's set this over to the side too. Right. Then we're just going to put our seed beads on and our little orange bead just like so. All right. And then we're just going to do another simple loop. I'm not going to go as too much as detailed this time on the second one, but you can just watch it to see just in case you missed something on the first one. All right, and I'm doing my loop here. Okay. And then I'm going to adjust my loops the way I want them. And then we're ready for our next one. Oh, thank you. Thank you so much, Melanie. 
I think they're beautiful too. You can't go wrong with these beads and thing, you know, the accompaniments that come with it, with the charms and everything. So uh, yeah, I mean, it doesn't have to be hard to be beautiful. Jewelry does not have to be difficult to be beautiful. I always say that if you use the right products, the right beads, the right pieces, um, especially with these, with Jesse James beads, everything is here that you need. And that's one of the things that really got me using Jesse James beads was because everything is there that you need and you can make beautiful pieces in no time, you know, and other people are still struggling to find their beads and their bead stash, which there's something to be said for digging for beads. That's fun. But I just felt like I have all this stuff at my fingertips, you know, right here. I'm going to use it. And I think that's what's so brilliant about what they do there. It's great for beginners. It's great for advanced. You know. So we're getting our seed bead and our over bead that's AB on there. And then our other seed bead. And um, I'm just going to do another loop, just a simple loop here because we're running sideways this time. So we're going to do another simple loop. And again, I'm just bending that wire. It It is really, I mean, this is a beautiful box. Beautiful. Again, if you missed it, it's Autumn Flight. They're all beautiful. I mean, last month was, um, oh gosh, I forget. It was a, let me find it. I think it's right here, guys. This one was stunning as well. Oh, yes. Scarborough Fair. And the beads, I have like thus almost cleaned it out, but these are the gorgeous beads that were in that. I mean, beautiful. I'll show you the piece here at the end that I made with that box. I really like it. All right, so we're just going to trim this to make our little loop. Roll it back. All right. And then we just have one more section. And we're going to do another loop. Easy peasy pumpkin squeezy. Again. And then we need our gold spacers here. These are super fun. And our rondelle, the gold spacer, and then another seed bead. And here's where we're going to do our wrap loop here at the top. Okay, that's all we have. Over and across, just like we did on the first one. You can see a sign of a good beater is a messy bead mat, right? <laughs> okay, so we have our wrap loops there around the wrapped it around the top. That was beautiful too. Can't wait for the winter shot. My kid is coming Friday, and my dad got that was really nice. Unfortunately. I am not going to be able to do the winter workshop this year um, due to finances, but I am just so excited for you all to enjoy it. It's going to be a good one. You know, Miss Jules is going to be there too. All kinds of good designers. And I just wrapped that just like we did on the first earring. I'm just going to tuck my end in, just like so. All right. And then I'm looking here. My, my loop is a little open here. So I want to make sure 
that my loops close before I start wrapping my wire because the wire will pop in through that loop and we do not want that to happen. Okay, so I'm just going to lay my wire here and start wrapping and I can feel that my wire is getting more hardened. So if you get at this point and your wire is a little too rough to, to work with after you did all this wire work with it, you can always cut yourself another piece and start fresh. And that's the easiest way to um, combat that. So here we go. We're going down the front. I'm going to make sure I'm in the front here. Okay. There we go. And I'm going to cross that over that bead and then just wrap it around the base a few times. You can go as crazy as you want. Like I said, if you want to do a bird's nest wrap and really build the wire up, you can. You can keep it simple just with a few wraps. I do, I think I did say I do have some other videos on my channel uh, that do use wire if you're wanting to check that out. Yeah, yeah, I bet, honey. I bet you were shocked. I know Amber's going to do, too. I think it was her parents got it for her as a um, birthday gift. So that was wonderful. I'm happy for her getting that, and she'll get to enjoy it. <clears throat> the uh, winter workshop with Jesse James Beats. Okay. So I'm just laying this out again, just seeing where we are, making sure all of my my loops that I made are in the order that I want them. That's good. That one needs to go that way. Oh, and you know it has to happen, right? <laughs> they always have to say something in our videos, don't they? Okay, so there we go. And we're just going to hook in our win. Arwen, hey, they're crazy. I always want to say hi. <laughs> okay, we're just going to open our jump ring up here and hook it onto our ear post here. like so and put our earring on facing the right direction so we want it to go that way and then just close our jump ring simple as that okay And I'm just straightening out my jump ring here. I want to make sure that it's closed correctly. It looks to me like it's overlapping a little bit. So I'm going to take my pliers and I'm just going to give this an adjustment so I can make sure everything's lined up the way I want it. Just rock it back and forth till you get it exactly where you want it. So it's nice and closed. And you hear that little click when you close it. All right. So there we go. We'll put the little butterfly clasp on the back of this here. And I will show you what we did today. Get these beads out of the way so we can actually see, right? From my messy bead mat. Okay. It shows up. So here are our gorgeous monarch earrings. Okay, and then our beautiful monarch necklace to go with. As always, my pieces are going to be posted in my shop, in my Etsy shop, if you haven't visited there. Um, the ones that I make on live and I make on my TikToks and things like that, I'll get posted up on my Etsy page. And here we go, guys. I hope you enjoyed this. Let me turn it around just to say goodbye. Let's see here and I forgive me I don't have the amount of makeup on I usually do 
when I do lives for Julum. But uh, today is kind of like a work from home day. So you get to see the real, the real, real, and my Mickey uh, dress it up button earrings too. <laughs> I hope you guys are doing well. And I hope that you will join me next time. I think I'm just going to start calling these pop up lives because I never know when I'm going to be feeling well enough to do them. So be on the look look out for them and make sure to hit your notification bell on my YouTube channel so you will be notified when I go live so you won't miss any of them. So thanks again guys for joining me and I will see you in the next one. Bye.